get busy living or get busy dying. Or just listen to Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond. It's a lot like dying. Slowly. Would you like to learn from those that are taking their lives, their businesses, and their passions to the next level? Best-selling author of Speak Easy and master connector Lou Diamond is here to connect you to some of the most inspiring and amazing people on this planet. Get ready to thrive loud with Lou Diamond. Welcome, everyone, to another spectacular episode of Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond, connecting you to the most inspiring and amazing people that are thriving each and every day. I'm your host, Lou Diamond. Oh, boy. Today on Thrive Loud, we have the founder of one of the fastest growing marketing platforms online, Drop Funnels, the world's first, only tech free platform to easily build your entire website, sales funnel, SEO powered blog, courses, and more. He's passionate about innovative and disruptive advertising tools and technology. He's also an award-winning filmmaker with his content seen on just about every streaming network you could think of. Thrive Loud listeners, I bring you Jordan Metarick. Jordo, how are you today, my friend? Thanks for having me on. It's uh, such a pleasure. You've got a great radio announcer voice. You've got that deep baritone richness to it. So Yes, the, the face for radio has always worked out well for me. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, as I noticed this, and we also noticed while I you know, am follically challenged up top, Jord- Jordo is blessed here, and that's what he goes by. Uh, I love this space in the marketing tech world of business. And I say this because as somebody that helps people with sales and marketing leadership, there's a lot of this stuff going around here, different tactics and methods of trying to find ways to bring leads in. So what I kind of want to do is do a little rewind. I don't want to go all the way to the womb. I want to kind of go back and understand how this line of work became your gig. Sure. So uh, yeah, I came from a, a, fam- a family of seven, so just beyond uh, the womb. Um, but it was very humble beginnings. I like to say uh, my 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 special phrase is uh, the silver spoon that we ate from came from goodwill. So very humble beginnings. But they, my dad was a church planter, and so it was kind of an entrepreneur that doesn't get paid. So he really taught me how to <laughs> hustle and scrap and get things together, but ultimately serve people um, and and to try to make a difference in the world in, in one way or another. And so that really led me through starting something like uh, 21 different businesses or jobs up through my upbringing and just trying to kind of find what I wanted to do. And I love to have my hands in lots of different pots at the, at the same time and just living, living life out loud as, as it were. Um, and so I was actually, I, I owned a video production company and I was making commercials for, you know, some fortune 100 brands and all of that. Um, but, uh, you know, it was kind of pulling, it was, you know, when you, you end up working in a lot of corporate work, you end up, you end up feeling like you're kind of selling your soul. And I'm a much more right brain, creative, emotive type than I am analytical metric based. Um, so for me, I knew I knew I wanted to, to, to make something really unique and impact the world. So I decided to make a feature film. Um, and, uh, and that went on to go to, to do pretty well, especially in our, our regional area. And, but the biggest problem that I had, and, and it was, it was commensurate throughout every other thing that I was trying to build was that it was really hard and very technical to get a business marketed quickly online. And, you know, uh, WordPress, which is one of the strongest foundations on the planet, it's one of my favorite tools, powers 34% of the internet. It's the number one ranking factor for you to show up in Google is just to be on a WordPress infrastructure, but it takes servers and tech and hosting and themes and plugins and you update it once and everything breaks. And anyone (laughs) listening to this is probably shaking their head like, yes, I've been through that. Um, so there's that power there, but over about the last six to eight years, these sales funnel builder platforms to get leads and, and uh, conversions um, came on to make it easier to build that. But they're lacking, almost all of them are lacking the technical foundation to help you to get all that or beautiful, free organic traffic, getting ranked in Google, um, and even pages loading quickly, which is becoming such a, a critical metric as it relates to your, uh, to your marketing. So. I took it upon myself to 
put together a small team of, of developers. I'm non-technical myself. I don't code a single line of, <laughs> of, of any of our code, but um, started bringing together some, some talent and we combined these two worlds. We said, how do you build on WordPress, but with zero tech and no headaches on the technical side at all? We'll just manage all of that for you. And building sales funnels, your courses, websites, blogs, sales pipelines, all in one spot, um, and doing it very quickly, drag and drop everything, so you can really get the best of both uh, of both worlds. And so that's really what brought us to today. We just had our third birthday uh, a couple days ago, so it's definitely been a journey. Awesome, uh, and 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 getting companies up and running and starting is one thing. Dealing with WordPress is another. I'm just going to state that we had one sure. of my sites had had that and dealt with it. And you're right, you need like coders and developers, but. Um, robustness and, and the internet today on how we message and a lot of the key factors that you're talking about are big priorities right now for lots of businesses who are trying to understand the next evolution of how they can find leads and, and, and be able to capture those opportunities at the top. What I'd love to understand is really the first big problem that you saw the market was missing that you said, I need to create drop funnels because this is something that isn't out there. What was that difference maker from all the other funnel and lead gen type of activities that were out there that said, wait, we got to fix this problem? Great question. There's uh, obvious, obviously a lot of platforms and over the past, you know, even since we've been around for the last three years, it's become pretty saturated with platforms and, and options out on the internet. But the one thing that I think, the one problem I wanted to tackle was how do you how do you scale a business but without having to be reliant on paid advertising right so there's only two different ways to drive traffic you can you can earn it through organic ranking or partnerships affiliates those types of things and but more relational or you can buy it and there comes a point in time where a business really does need to have paid acquisition channels in place but especially for most people who are starting either small or medium businesses they really just need to create they need a system that can bring in leads automatically and get people drawn into their ecosystem without managing Facebook ads, which have become extremely expensive. YouTube ads have always been expensive. TikTok is a little bit less expensive, but you kind of have to sing and dance and act like a monkey to get attention on TikTok. So there's that whole other side that for me, I felt uh, was an important thing to tackle because we were the only sale all in one sales funnel platform uh, that's built entirely on WordPress. Um, there's other plugins and themes and some small things, but again, you have to be a technician or a coder to figure it out. So for us, I wanted to say, how do we do this all in one and to build it on an infrastructure where when people are searching, say you're a fitness coach and someone says uh, on, on Google, you know, how do I lose 10 pounds in 30 days? And imagine if your sales funnel is pulled up like or your or what I recommend a lot of people build is what's called an authority funnel. So it looks and feels like a website. It's a single page, looks like a website and a, and a consumer would see it as a website, but it only has one call to action and a very clear flow to get people to move into your ecosystem. So no massive menus, no share buttons, no all these uh, you know uh, distractions that essentially take a, it's like taking a bucket, poking a bunch of holes in it and all the leads are just running all over the place. Instead, it very uh, systemically pushes your leads into your sales pipeline to either become a buyer or a lead for you. So by combining an infrastructure that can help you to get ranked faster than any other uh, any other platform that exists, WordPress is just that powerful, um, but with uh, an easy way to build on top of it and to point people directly into your sales funnels, um, it's a very unique and niche uh, problem that we're solving for sure. Uh, but for, for someone who really wants to just say, I want to set it, forget it and just let Google bring in my, 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 my leads and my buyers for me. That's uh, that's a key for us. We always love to say that everyone could benefit from what we have, but to your point about being very niche and whatnot, there are some that probably benefit more. Uh, Jordo, who is the avatar or ideal avatar of the type of business or company that is specifically going to benefit from what drop funnels has packaged and put together? So we focus pretty specifically on businesses that are selling their expertise or their information. So uh, consultants, coaches, if you're building digital courses, uh, maybe you're putting out eBooks or uh, you know mini guides, types of digital information products. That's really the, the number one uh, prospectus uh, client for us. 
Uh, so agencies, for example, they're providing a service, but we even have some uh, service providers that are in a more local perspective. We have a, a septic company that we've helped just explode, uh, believe it or not. So they're geolocated, but we've been able to help them just, just crush their local market by using sales funnels, um, but in the, the septic service space. So even if it's that niche, uh, it makes a lot of sense. I would say to answer the antithesis, uh, it's not really a good fit for physical e-commerce style products. That's where you go to Shopify. Um, if if you don't if you don't have a business, believe it or not, there are people who don't have a business and they sign up and then they don't have something to sell. So it's like, well, if you don't have a business, that's not for you either. Uh, okay. But specifically, people doing uh, services and um, and and helping people with their information. I just had to jump in here on the, we don't want to make a septic company explode. I don't, whether that's good or bad, there's nothing good about a septic <laughs> company exploding. That's always a word. How about well, septic company, you know, di dispensing great growth or something of that nature. I'm sorry for sure. having yeah, had septic I, I, problems. Poor in the choice of words on my part. <laughs> um, so, so, so now, the, the, and I understood it's perfect type of target of who we have. And by the way, there's a lot of people, self-included, who have, uh, you know, courses and offerings and things that people want. Um, let's talk about the biggest challenge. They, they've they engaged drop funnels. They've come up with um, it, the flow through in the system is all there. They've got everything set up. Uh, talk to me about, remember, we've still got to put some really good content in there. So you're providing the really good tech-free platform for people to use. What's the biggest common mistake or problem you're seeing as it relates to funneling? Because I think this is actually a good best practice thing that a lot of listeners who are trying to figure out how to better message and grow their business and bring in the right lead opportunities for them to succeed. Um, talk about some of the big failures or the things you see where it, it just isn't, that's not the best way to do it, but share with that maybe some of those lessons that you've learned. Boy, there's, we could chat for days on that, I feel like. <laughs> um, yeah, there's, I think in the same way that if I wanted to get into, um, you know, uh, for, like base jumping or, or skydiving, those types of things, which I've never done, but I'm, I'm interested in, in trying. If I were to just, throw on a parachute and just jump out of the plane right away. There's a chance that I would survive and I would land that experience. There is, the, there, it is, pro, it could happen. Chances aren't very good. So there's a skill set quote, uh, kind of quotient to the, the conversation even more so than the tech, because the tech is already there for you to, to, to use, but it's almost like um, another comparison would be if you give, you know, give a, a teenager a jackhammer and they've never used it before, they're going to be like, what do I, you know, what do I do? So I, what I need to know is I need to learn the skill set of how to use a jackhammer or how to skydive. I need to be taught and mentored, you know, how to do that and then develop that skill. Specifically in, in our space, this, that skill is direct response marketing, meaning that we are either getting leads or getting buyers based on take an action right now. So we're not doing billboards, we're not doing logos on business cards or flyers, any of that, that's just general awareness. It's almost, you can't even calculate um, the, the ROI on traditional methods very accurately because it, there's no direct call to action. But some of the biggest brands that are leveraging direct response marketing versus old school traditional marketing, you're able to see down to the dollar in day exactly how much it costs you to get a new lead or what efforts required to get a new lead and your lifetime value over time for each client. It's super powerful to be tracking this and direct response marketing is that key. So, you know, if, if, for example, someone said, Hey, I want more leads. Great. Okay. So how do we get, how do we get you more leads? Well, we might, uh, for example, let's take the septic company. Um, they're saying, Hey, we want to get more people interested in replacing or, or building a brand new septic system. Okay, cool. So we need to build an opt-in page. It's a very simple page. That's going to get people to inquire for more information from us. So I would suggest the two-step funnel, which essentially it's one page that says, are you looking to replace your septic system at less than half the cost of traditional methods? Click here for more information. They can insert their name, email, phone number that goes into a CRM for them to follow up with immediately. Um, but also automatically books, books them over to an appointment that they can book right away. As soon as that septic company uh, is able to get in touch with that homeowner or, or construction company, they're able to meet with them directly, build that relationship and close the, and close the deal. So versus saying, uh, hey, uh, XYZ septic company, put it up on a billboard and you're just wishing, hoping and praying that someone actually comes to you to want to buy it. Instead, we want to in both incentivize, but also motivate people 
We want to partner with human nature and lean into that desire of something that a desire that they have right now to capitalize on that, get to the lead first and offer the solution. Three years. And congratulations on that, by the way, which, you know, any any business that is able to even have any anniversary is always exciting. Talk about the challenge and growth as being a leader of this company. Um, obviously, it probably looks a little different than it did three years ago. Talk about what that growth and experience has been for you and what you're excited about that's coming on the horizon in the future. Boy, I, I always uh, kind of behind closed doors, at least I'd like to say that I'm the least qualified CEO of all time. So I'm learning <laughs> every day and making more mistakes than most uh, people do. You know, and we have, there's some really huge, there are giants uh, in our com competitive landscape. ClickFunnels is humongous. You know, there's lots of other platforms that would kind of be similar comparisons. You know, and, and for me, I've always wanted to have a, a more, a closer or more intimate relationship with not just our team, but also our customers and help them every step of the way. So all of our support is, I've always made that a priority, like fast, accurate, really top-notch support. Um, and that's the reason why a lot of people uh, end up staying. It's one of the biggest differentiators that you see as a surprise and delight down the road. But, you know, for me as a leader, I think uh, what I've learned is you can't, I think it's very much around talent acquisition and retention. So building in people, I think one of my mistakes that I've made is that I've often hired based on on potential instead of experience, where mm. the opposite should be true. You should be hiring only on experience, not on potential. So I think in the early days, I was bringing on people who were just excited. They didn't know what they were doing, but they were excited and warm bodies to put in the seat and to train them up and get them going. But that really is a very slow path to getting where you need to go. And really, if you, if as a leader, if you want to get what you want, you need to give your, give your team what they want. So that's, it's been much more of a challenge to, to both identify and cultivate a, a culture of the internal team helping to hit their own goals. For example, my, my COO, you know, a, a couple, um, a couple years ago was like next to broke and he just bought his first Tesla. So it's just <laughs> like, wow, that's just a small thing, right? It's just, it was a, it was a goal to hit and being able to up level your own value to get you to a point where you can achieve some of your personal uh, wins is a, it's a tremendous, um, I think it's a huge milestone for a lot of people. So for me, I think, whether it's for drop funnels or anything else I do in the future, I think getting really good at cust at, uh, at talent acquisition and retention is going to be key. Like it. I love asking uh, great leaders on this program this question. I want to see where this goes. Uh, look, you, to get a company up and running with a specific niche and even have one anniversary, as I said, is successful to get to the third and continue to see the growth you're having is awesome, which means you're thriving most days, which is why you're here on Thrive Loud. But we all have those days when we're a little off our game and we're not quite kicking on all cylinders. Jordan Metterick, when you have trouble thriving, what practice do you seek or maybe which individual do you seek out to get yourself back on the thriving track? Boy, I think, I love this phrase that time heals all wounds. And I think I might be very alone in this sentiment, but I think when you're really struggling or you hit you just hit a wall on something. And I, I remember it was a couple of weeks ago. I just had this really, really tough day. It was not just one thing that I'll throw you off. There was like <clears> eight <throat> and every single thing that happened that day of my eight appointments or eight things I needed to achieve that day, all of them fell apart and came with a bunch of just flags and, and some negativity and just issues and people, you know, uh, unhappy people for whatever reason, or, you know, just things that happen in life, both personally and, and professionally. And it all piled into one day. You know, and for me, I think it's important to even disconnect for the moment and just kind of let that cool off. Yeah. And even just to go step away, to, you know, when it's when it's nicer here, I love to go fishing. So sometimes I'll just go fish and say, look, I, I could deal with this problem now, um, but I will probably deal with it more wisely if I give this a little time. Um, or in some cases, it self-resolves where, uh, you know, if there, there's a, an issue or a pressure. So I think giving yourself a little bit of time, whether it's a couple hours or just even sleeping on it before dealing with the big problem um, can, can be really beneficial. Love it. Let's do the admin part of the show. We're going to get to Fun Street here. Uh, share with the listeners all the places people can learn about you, drop funnels, websites, URLs. We will put it all in the show notes, but it gets way more engagement when they hear it from you. 
Sure. Yeah. So uh, dropfunnels.com is a place uh, where you could do one of two things. One, you can see an example of what an authority funnel looks like. You'll see that it looks like a, a traditional website to sign up for that, but you'll see that every button, almost every link on it leads you directly into uh, signing up to the platform and we have a free trial. So for those who are looking to build uh, websites or sales funnels built on WordPress, this is a great place to kick off. Um, and on all of the social platforms, I'm, I'm at, I have the same handle for all of them. It's your bro Jordo. So Y O U R B R O J O R D O. Um, and I put out some reels and content and some inspiring stuff there and started that process about uh, 90 days ago. Cause I'd never done anything on social media. Uh, really. So I'm, uh, you'll see that my follower count is slowly growing, but I wish I would have started five years ago. Um, so I'd love to connect with anyone if, if they have questions. Love it. As we go down fun street here, I want to do a little lead in cause I, I read this in the opening. Obviously you are an award-winning filmmaker. Um, can you share this movie? And it, it said it was obviously very focused in your area uh, what it's about and uh, just we'll put it all, a link to it, a link to any of the promos for it uh, where appropriate in our stuff too. Tell, tell everyone what this film was. Sure. So it was a documentary film. It was called Church of Felons. And it's a story of four multi-offense uh, felons and what happens after a life of addiction. And it really begs the question of, do you believe in second chances? Or do you believe that there is life after severe uh, addiction of, you know, um, th these stories are, are telling uh, really looking at what led them to make those decisions um, to what caused them to kind of become addicted to either drugs or alcohol in a really severe way earlier in their life. What are the factors that led up to that? What decisions did they make that led to the darkest day of their life? And we, we kind of recreate those, those four stories pretty visually, you know, for, for example, one of the stories uh, you know, he was drunk driving and he killed somebody and and it was uh, that story had never really been told. I knew I needed to tell that story. Another one, he went and he was on a drunken shooting rampage and went and burned down a church. And ju it's just these bizarre things that that the crazy choices that people choose when they're, you know, incapacitated with some type of a chemical. And so we launched it. It's a documentary. It's about uh, 90 minutes. It's free on YouTube. So if you church, search Church of Felons, and I think it's on Amazon Prime as well. Awesome. Um, but launched that several years ago and it was cool to put, uh, we put eight people into addiction recovery centers, helped to fix people's, it's called meth mouth when they, when they smoke a lot of meth, all their teeth rot out. So we we're able to replace mm -hmm. a couple people's teeth. And so it was very much a passion project, but I'm still very proud of it. Speaking of movies, can you share with the listeners, Jordo, what's one of your all time favorite movies? I'm probably going to be, uh. Uh, labeled as maybe not super masculine for this because most people would say it's something uh you know bl blood and guts and glory kind of stuff or star wars or some more masculine movie or whatever but for me um the movie that i i come back to continually is the movie la la land um which is an incredible Great modern movie. musical so well done um same director who did whiplash which is probably also on my top five yeah uh, uh so any i like musical Based or music focused stories because I think those are are really beautiful and, and you know there's so so much depth to to those films that you can watch it 30 times and you're going to pick up something new each time. I like the alternate timeline scenarios showing you what yes. could happen and one other one. I thought that was actually Genius. really well done. Yeah, very very well and very well acted out throughout the whole piece, which was pretty cool. It's very it's very very much like Inception, right? Like to even yeah. for Christopher Nolan, all of his stuff is beautiful too. And anything that he makes, it's just like he puts so much creative thought into a plot that he just takes you on this incredible journey throughout. So I think it's amazing. Love it. We're going to do the speed round here, Jordo. Here's how it works. I'm going to ask you a question. I just want the first thing that comes to your mind. These are things that lift you up, motivate you, make you feel good. Basically, they make you thrive. Ready? Okay. Of late, a song that you've been listening to or maybe one that pumps you up. Oh, boy. I'll have to look it up. There's a, It's called... Uh, it's by Christopher Tin, who's an amazing... I bet you I could search for it, but I know it's a speed round, so I'm probably cheating. <laughs> we could, my team can but, do it for you, but yeah. Yeah, sure. So it's called uh, Wayo, it's Wa Loyo Yamoni. So uh, incredible song. There's a YouTube video that's just absolutely blown up, and I've been listening to that on repeat, but this just heart punching, powerful piece of cinematic and orchestral mastery. Like it. A favorite food that's not a dessert. Oh, pizza all day. I'm, I'm a glutton for carbs and punishment. So a, a favorite dessert. 
anything with vast amounts of chocolate in it, uh, triple chocolate cheesecake would be amazing. An activity you wish you did more of? Uh, fishing, for sure. Gotcha. An activity you wish you did less of? Mm, I don't think I've ever been asked that question. It's what makes um, Thrive Loud so special. Oh, jeez. What's something I wish I did less of? Uh, I wish I wish I worried less. I'm kind of a okay. worry worm. At worry. Certain times. That's a good, that's a good worrying, one. Worrying less. An activity you've recently tried that was new to you that you want to tell everybody about because you loved it so much. Mm. Uh, we've got an RV. Um, and, you know, thankfully I get to kind of, I can work anywhere that has a, an internet connection. And so we, we took the whole family on this really long, expansive RV trip. And that oh, was a ton fun. of fun. The only, the only caveat is you, I didn't have Starlink or something that could really help to make sure that I had a good internet connection. That's the only thing you really need to consider. Uh, but otherwise a great experience. If I could snap my fingers and Jordo could be anywhere in the world, where is he? Carlsbad, California. Okay. And why there? Slice. It's a slice of heaven. The weather's perfect. The food is amazing. Mm. It's a tiny town. I love small towns, um, but also access to so many cool things that California offers. Jordan Metric, Drop Funnels. Everybody check out the links, the promos. Truly a pleasure to have you on the show. Continued success to you. Hey, let, let's catch you on the next anniversary and hear how things are going with Drop Funnels. Sound like a I'd, I'd love that. Thank you for having me on. You got it. To all the listeners out there, thank you for joining us. And until next time, keep moving on, winning upward. And remember, be brief, be bright, be gone. listening to Thrive Loud with your host, Lou Diamond. Check us out on the web at thriveloud.com and follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook at Thrive Loud. And check us out on the Good Pods app at Thrive Loud, where you can follow, listen, and connect directly to Lou and all of the Thrive Loud episodes. Thanks for listening.